coming up next, we have Cam Newton's favorite pick of the draft. Notorious Kirk Cousins hater Cam Newton was ecstatic when he found out at number eight, the Atlanta Falcons draft, Michael Penix? Yeah, see, <laughs> this one we weren't expecting whatsoever. And I've really tried to contextualize this pick and be like, and try to feel them out and see maybe why they picked what they did. And I still can't yeah. because they just gave Kirk Cousins $160, $180 million over four years. I understand they can get out of it in two years, but and he is coming off an Achilles injury, but you needed defensive players. At this time, Dallas Turner was available, who was considered the best edge rusher in there, or even Latu Lutu, who ended up going to the Colts. But instead, you take a guy who isn't going to be playing for a minimum of two years, who's coming off of a major injury, and also, you could use some... You're in a division that you could easily win. Shouldn't you draft somebody in the first round, especially as high as you're drafting, somebody who's immediately going to come in and step in for you? Yeah. No. They say no. So Falcons drafting decisions already in question here. Is Michael Penix going to be good? Who knows? But this is not who you should have taken at number eight. You know how this would have made sense? If Kirk Cousins was on the Atlanta Falcons for the past 10 years, and then he was just coming off a Achilles injury, and they're like, oh, maybe for some insurance, we should draft Michael Penix. Totally get that. You know what you shouldn't do? Sign a quarterback to a bunch of money, bring him into your organization, think like, oh, wow, we went 7-10, and 7-10. and 10. That was with some pretty crappy quarterback play. Now we got Kirk Cousins, who's the definition of slightly above average quarterback play. We feel like we're going to win the division. The Bucks barely won the division last year. They're probably going to be a little bit worse this year. And then let's ruin that by not even consulting Kirk Cousins. And then you saw the image of the GM trying to stop the owner from immediately firing him and then seeing if he could somehow get his pick back from Roger Goodell. The owner didn't look like he was that happy. And now you have Michael Penix Jr. who's not going to make an impact for three years who also has injury issues. So if you're worried about Kirk Cousins' Achilles injury, well... Michael Penix has had two knee injuries and I believe a neck injury as well. And like, I think he's a great fit for Atlanta, but if you knew you were going to take Michael Penix, I don't know. How about you suck for another year, get someone like a Jacoby Brissett, and then you can draft Michael Penix. Like, okay, you have a plan for your future. Suck next year while he rehabs, gets his body right. And then you'll have another high first round draft pick that you can either trade for a wide receiver or draft a wide receiver. All of those things make more sense than signing an older quarterback to $160 million. And then you won't even know if Michael Penix is the guy or is reliable until like a year or two. So he'll only have like one or two seasons to prove himself, which is kind of my problem with drafting a guy that's not going to play for at least potentially four years potentially four years and then his contract year is the next year so you really only have one body of work under like for tape to actually know if Michael Penix is someone you want to sign long term not only that but by the time he actually plays he's going to be in a retirement home because he's already 25 years old so he's the third oldest player in NFL history to be drafted in the first round the other two guys are Chad Pennington and the infamous Brandon Whedon. And how did those guys pan out? Not too great. They could have taken who they ended up taking the very next pick, Roma Dunze. I look at their wide receiver core for the Falcons. I say, Drake London, he's pretty good. Who's their number two? They have Kyle Pitts, who we don't know is great or is not great. We don't know yet. And then Bijan, they could have gone and got a wide receiver there and been a lot more successful. So this pick, even if it does work out, and even if it is like a Jordan Love pick where it ends up aging okay at the end of it, it's still a nightmare. Yeah. Can you have waited two years, though? Yes. <laughs> you could have waited till next year, at least. At least with the Jordan Love pick, it's like Aaron Rodgers was in year 16. He had just come off two back MVPs, and yeah. they already had a really good roster. So it made a little bit more sense. We definitely bullied that pick for a long time, especially when Jordan Love was struggling. But at least that made more sense. We don't have. We have Kirk Cousins coming in, not being consulted, the eighth overall pick, 
with a guy who has injury issues and is already 700 years old. So it's like, I just think this is going to fail. I yeah. think this is going to be a bust. I hope not. I always wish the best for these players, but it's going to be, he's going to be a bust. Yeah, I hope not. It's just a weird situation, and it's like a culmination of a lot of things with the Atlanta Falcons there. So definitely a head-scratching pick. And again, to my point before, if Kirk Cousins was on your team for a while and you hadn't just signed him and you're like, okay, coming off a of Kelly's injury, makes sense. But now you just bring in another quarterback with injury issues. I'm like, okay, what exactly are we doing here? At least wait till the second round. But you're in win-now mode. Like the owner wants to win. You've been seven and ten, seven and ten for the past few years. It's time to actually either get the second best receiver in the draft or third best in Romo Dunze or the best defensive player where you could have gotten Dallas Turner at this point or Byron Murphy. 